Welcome to How to Learn the Nordschleifer in Under an Hour, Part 5. Well done for making it this far. I know you had a lot of corners to learn and lots of sections which really do take some time to get your head around. The good news is that section 5 here includes quite a long straight, the dotting of her. So a large proportion of this section is actually just a dead straight line. Um, as always, we're going to be running through, first of all, learning the corner names and the meanings, then showing you how to drive, and then doing a high-speed demonstration at the end. So we begin this section where we left off part four, which is Flants Garden. It translates simply as Plant Garden, and it's a little jump which is followed by a right-hander, and you rise up the hill to a much bigger jump. Now, you actually don't jump off the floor in the slower classes of car, uh, but Flansgarten 2, or Sprunghugel, translates straight to jump hill, so in a fast car you really do take off over there. Next, you've got a twisty section, which you actually try and take as straight as possible, which is called the Stefan Beloff S, named after the legend of the Nordschleifer who held the lap record for a number of years, and still technically does if you're talking about race lap records. The next section is named Schwalbenschwanz, which translates as swallow's tail, because the people who built the track thought this section of track looked like a swallow's tail. And that also includes this left-hander, where it's very easy to run wide into the small gravel trap on the right-hand side. So the next corner is very memorable, it's the Kleiner's Carousel, which is just the little carousel, small carousel. Same kind of concrete paving as you saw at the Caracciola Carousel earlier in the lap, but it's a much shorter corner. It's very easy to pop out of it by mistake too early. And that's followed by Galgenkopf, which translates literally as gallows head, um, and the word head is also used for hill in German quite often. It's a hill where there were public executions hundreds of years ago, and uh, it's quite an eerie place to walk through when the cars are going round, or even when they're not. Next, probably the easiest section of the entire circuit, and the first place you get to rest on the whole lap, it's the Dottinger Hur, which means the high point near the village of Dottingen. On the right hand side you'll see Castle Nürburg, and we'll also approach the tourist pits. This is where you'd enter or leave the circuit when you're driving your own car and it's not during a race. That's just coming up on the right hand side now. The Devil's Diner is also located there, so you might smell some tasty fried food as you drive past this section. And all you've done really is make a, a gentle transition over to the right hand side before you go under the bridge here at Antonio's Booker. There was a monument here to Saint Antonio under a large beech tree before they built the main road. That then drops you down into Tear Garden, which means Animal Garden. This is the site of a former pet cemetery. Next we come to the Hohenrein Chicane. This is basically an elevated field boundary, just a ridge between two fields, which then feeds us into the final right-hander on this version of the Nordschleifer, which is the T13 corner. T13, Tribune 13, just the old grandstand on the right-hand side. And that completes a lap of the Nordschleifer. Here's how to drive it. So as you approach Flansgarten 1, you either need to brake before or after you go over the jump. If you do it in the middle, you're likely to lock the wheels in midair, maybe confuse your ABS system if you've got it, so make a decision before you get there. You're then going to be absolutely flat out as you rise over Flansgarten 2, or Sprunghugel, and this is flat out in any car I've ever driven. You then pull the car slightly to the left in anticipation of turning right here into the Stefan Beloff S, and you pick the straightest possible line between these curbs. The curbs come towards you. You only have to change your line very slightly, trying to stay off the curbs. You then brake in a straight line towards the outside of the track here. There's actually a big round bush there in reality that you can brake towards as you head into Schwalbenschwanz. You don't need to use the full width of the track here, and you don't really have time to pull the car all the way to one side or the other through the left-hander at Schwalbenschwanz. And then you've got the Kleiner's Carousel. Pretty simple, just don't turn in too early. If you drop into this too early, you'll then jump out of it too early, and you'll be heading towards the barrier with your front tyres off the floor. You're then full speed up towards Galgenkopf. Now this one, you need to just be bravery. You need to know that the car is going to run wide mid-corner. And then the grip will come back to you. You'll be able to get back towards the ideal line on the inside here, towards the end of the corner. Once you commit to the throttle, make sure you can maintain it. Because if you have to lift again, you've then really harmed your speed down the dotting of her, down this long straight. Now, at this point, you can talk on the radio if you're in a race, you can take a drink from your drinks bottle, you can take in the view, you've got the cast on the right-hand side, but it's basically a straight line. It's a chance to check your mirrors, maybe pick up a slipstream from the car in front, and just take the shortest possible distance as you migrate over to the right-hand side of the track, ready to do the next corner, which is Antonio's Brooker. 
Now, you can actually take this full throttle on any part of the track. So even if you're on the inside here, you can still be full throttle through here, provided there's not someone squeezing you and pinning you in on the right-hand side. Or maybe it's really wet. As we drop down into Tiergarten, this is really single file now, so make sure you're not alongside another car. And then you're going to be leaving it as late as you can without being too risky on the brakes, because by about now, where you use this extra part of the asphalt here, you do need to be going very slowly, otherwise you'll go straight into the wall in front of you. Use the kerb on the right there, and then brake early before this final right-hander, T13 here, where the old grandstand is on your right-hand side, before you cross the finish line to complete your lap. And finally, this section at full speed. You're going to brake before or after the jump at Flans Garden 1. You're then going to be absolutely full throttle, with maybe a slight lift just here if you need one. Definitely full throttle over Flans Garden 2. Pull the car slightly to the left here, ready to take the right-hander of the Stefan Beloff S full throttle. Pick a straight line through the middle and be careful not to touch the kerbs. Look for your braking mark. It's the bush on the outside. You're braking in a straight line, and then you're turning towards the right-hand side before you then break and again turn left into Schwalbenschwanz. You've got a short blast to the Kleiner's carousel. Once again, braking, turn in slightly late to make sure you don't fall out of the carousel in the middle. It's obviously then full throttle over this slight rise as you head up towards Galgenkopf. You're going to maybe just brush the brakes here before you turn in smoothly, then squeeze the throttle in the middle part. You run a little wide, then you pull the car back to the inside and it's full throttle from here all the way down the Dottinger Hook. Maybe take a drink from your drinks bottle. Definitely try and pick up a slipstream from the car in front if there is one. This is such a high speed section. Even if the car in front is a long way ahead of you, you can still pick up some kind of benefit from a slipstream. You're then taking the shortest possible route to allow the car to migrate over to the right hand side. You see how the track is almost just gently curving over to the left hand side as you pass the tourist pits and you smell the fried food from the Devil's Diner and it's still absolutely full throttle as you go through Antonio's Booker under the bridge here. You can take a typical racing line towards the inside, but if there is someone next to you, it's not the end of the world, provided they don't run you wide. And then start to think about your braking as you go single file down here into Tiergarten, then Hohenrein. So you're going to use the extra bit of the asphalt here, braking again, use the kerb on the right-hand side, very low gear through this section here. Then you're going to have a short blast before you brake early, turn early right into this final right-hander at T13, and cross the finish line. Well done, guys. You've learned the Nordschleife in under an hour. Thank you for watching everyone, and if this series of videos has been useful to you, please like, subscribe, and maybe share it with anyone that you think it might be useful to.